Hey everyone, Katrina Sawa here, the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach with jumpstartyourmarketing.com. <clears throat> and thanks for responding to my post earlier today about what should I do a Facebook Live on today. I actually recorded a video earlier on uh, this topic on meetups <clears throat> when my regular computer and I was just going to upload it to YouTube, but I thought, well, maybe I'll do a live because there'll be a lot more people watching. And uh, so, Meetups is one of those things that can be very lucrative for someone's business if they're done right. And you want to set it up the right way from the first the first meeting. <laughs> and so many people get started uh, just haphazardly or randomly thinking they need to do live events and then nobody comes and then you're, you know, you're like, well, why isn't it working? Why is me? So uh, I want to give you some tips today on... Uh, the pros and cons of whether to do one or not, when to do one or not, uh, some logistical stuff that I've found that is more effective so that you're not wasting a bunch of time in the wrong places, as well as some tips on filling seats and even presenting and making sure that you position yourself as the expert uh, at your meetup, and of course monetizing. So the first thing is why do you want to have a meetup? And hi, Jason. That's my husband. <laughs> okay, so why do you want to have one? Uh, I run one because it brings in new leads and prospects for my business, plain and simple. I would not be doing it any for any other reason, period. Uh, I'm not doing it for my health. I'm not doing it to... Uh, you know, just to network. There's plenty of events and other meetups that I can go to if I just want to meet people, right? But I want to position myself as the expert in speaking and marketing in my local area. <clears throat> now, in my meetup too, I actually took over one that was already uh, growing and pretty big already a couple of years ago. And so that's a great way to do it is follow some meetups and then watch for if you know if the organizer ever steps down, you always want to snatch <clears throat> you want to snatch up that that organizer role pretty quickly and take charge. You can't hesitate on that one. Someone else might beat you to it because you've got a built-in list. So it's kind of silly not to do that. And you can even partner with some of the organizers because I'll bet you there's dozens of meetups in your area that have organizers that are overwhelmed. They can't get enough people live to the event by themselves. They're too busy to worry about the marketing to themselves. And I bet if you stepped in and offered to be a co-organizer and help promote it, if it's a topic that can uh, that is a good fit for you, obviously, and that you could share the limelight, the spotlight, right, and share in that. So it could be something to think about that way. But always have a purpose for anything you do. Don't just willy-nilly go off on a marketing strategy and add something to your plate. That's just not a smart thing to do. So if you're going to do a meetup, <clears throat> really have it planned from the beginning, what the purpose is, who, who it's for, how is it going to help you grow your business, what kind, how are you going to position yourself, how are you going to monetize it. Now, you're not necessarily going to make a bunch of money from charging a $10 or $20 entry fee, okay? But you can, uh, I've made probably over 60 grand from running a meetup, I'm telling you the truth, because people have come from my meetup to my three-day event and then gotten into my annual mastermind program. So, like I said, you got to set it up with the right theme, the right focus of topic, the right agenda, the right material, uh, the right amount of training and not too much training because if you give them too much for $10, they're not coming back to buy something, right? So, you got to give them just a little bit of sample of what, uh, what you can offer to position yourself enough uh, to make them want more from you. <clears throat> Hi, Rick. How's it going? And so, uh, when to start and why? So, make sure that you don't start a meetup <clears throat> when you are struggling to make money. <laughs> that is not the best time to start a meetup. That is the time to go to a dozen meetups a week or as many events as humanly possible. That is the time to go and attend events when you are struggling to pay your bills because you don't want to take another <clears throat> payment on, number one, to pay the meetup. And you don't want to have to go find a place that might charge you to host a meetup. You don't want to be 
like stressed out and desperate for that 10 or $15 that you're going to charge because that won't look good. Okay. And you certainly don't want to be desperate to get enough people in the room to buy your stuff. So that's not a good plan. It's a pl good plan to go networking when you need cash flow, but not necessarily to host your own event right at that time, in my opinion. <clears throat> so when is a good time? When you have a good amount of uh, client base already or customer base, when you have some time to devote, because running a meetup actually takes a little bit of time. Unless you are super ooper, super duper duper organized and efficient and systematized like I am, then you're probably gonna spend 10 to 20 hours a month on your meetup, which is a lot of time. I don't want you spending that much time, mind you. I want you to get as extremely organized and systematized and, and streamlined as possible because that's how you're going to leverage this type of marketing strategy for monetizing it more in the back end. And I don't necessarily have time to go into all those systems, but um, using your website as the hub of your business is key. Of course, you're gonna have a meetup page on the meetup, and I put the link to my meetup page in the post here, so you can actually go look and see what I do at the Sacramento Speaker and Entrepreneur Network meetup that I run. Um, but read through the description, read through my agenda, look how I'm doing it. Right? And granted, yours might be different. Mine's for speakers and entrepreneurs. Your, yours might not be business focused at all for the attendees. But pay attention to how I'm elevating myself as the expert in the, in the agenda there. And I'm also bringing in other people though. I have two speakers at my live event um, as well as one at my webinar. And then I give a short training as well. So it's not just me speaking. I like to give opportunity to other people in my group. Number one, it's a speaker's group. Hey, Pam. And, uh, but number two, if I can give opportunity to other people to speak, then they're going to start paying attention more. They're also going to come more and want to be, they're going to want to be known. You know, they want me to remember them so that I might pick them to speak, right? So the if you can give other people opportunities more, from your meetup to either spotlight them in the room or maybe monthly pick two or three people to spotlight or something like that, that will make them want to come more often, right? If you let them make an offer or introduce themselves or different kinds of things that, that or do some kind of an exercise where they'll meet people in the room a little bit better, especially for those introverted people, right? <clears throat> Those introverted people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, for, for people that aren't necessarily networking oriented, make it very interactive because people will want to come back, okay? Then, of course, you have to give some value. You have to figure out how to make it. You don't have to necessarily teach something or show something, or, but you can have a discussion, a really good discussion. Sometimes when I have a really small group at mine, like four to six people, we do a mastermind, you know, we go around the room, what topic do you want to talk about? Okay, and then we all share resources, and it's super juicy. It's actually one of the best meetings ever is the smaller event. So don't be afraid that you're going to do this and not get anybody there. Um, so you could get a little bit of, you might in the first few months get a very small number of people. I have some clients who start meetups and get literally two people, one person, three people for a few months. And then you think, oh, I'm just gonna give up. No, this is a strategy that's a long-term strategy. It's not a fast cash strategy. It's a long-term strategy for consistency. You gotta be consistent though with running these meetups. <clears throat> in fact, you wanna do something at least once a month and you wanna do it in person. That's what meetup is designed to do. Now, once you have an in-person meeting, you can add a virtual meeting, like I did this year. I added a webinar. So anybody from anywhere could actually come to our Sacramento Speaker and Entrepreneur Network webinar, which actually happens to be next Tuesday. So you're welcome to come and check it out. I do it on Zoom. And that meeting is actually free because there's no cost to me. The luncheon, I have a cost and you're gonna eat. I'm gonna give you food, whether you eat or not, it still costs. And that's just to establish the ground rules and some skin in the game. And I'm not going to, and that's the way it is. And sometimes I get people that say, oh, can I come and check out your group for free? I just, I don't have to eat. I'll just, is it okay if I just come for free once to check it out? I'm like, no, everybody there pays and everybody there gets value. So if you don't agree with that, then you don't have to come. It's okay. 
Um, I only want people who are really serious about building their business and building themselves as a speaker <clears throat> in my group. So be, hold, stick to your, stick to your boundaries. So whatever you decide to stick to, to charge or um, don't waffle on them. Don't be wishy-washy. Be firm yet um, ac accommodating, right? Firm but accommodating. When people show up last minute at the door, it's always ten dollars more, and I charge them. I charge them ten dollars more because I warned you. <laughs> I warned you multiple times. How many emails do people get, right? So, hey Laura, hey Pam, uh, thanks for coming, you guys. Uh, post your questions if you have questions about meetups or events in general. I'm happy to answer. Uh, let's see. So on the online description, some of the logistics. <clears throat> some people on their meetups don't fill out enough information. First of all, it's good for search engines. It's good for search engines to have lots of content inside your about page or your description about this group, right? So put lots of stuff in there. But also, don't forget to put links, hyperlinks, back to your website. Oh my God, I can't even tell you how many meetups I see where people are not doing this. It's like a huge missed opportunity. Huge missed opportunity. So make sure you're putting your complete contact information, your websites. I even drive people to a free training where they can get a free training about a, a, speaker, a speaker audio that I do. And then I drive them, I did one webinar like when I first started this program and I was talking about my goals for the group and what I did was uh, recorded that, <clears throat> that webinar and I give that webinar, it's an hour webinar training about, about the meetup that I'm going to run, the logistics and the agenda and all that, what it's all about, but also tips on speaking and all that because that's my topic, right? So they get the webinar, they can listen to the free audio, there's all kinds of free stuff they can actually listen to, and it's all in the description of the meetup. Now, granted, a lot of people don't pay attention, and that drives me crazy, it's probably my biggest pet peeve, is people that don't pay attention. <laughs> but you can do what you can, right? And you can lead a horse to water, but if they just look around and don't see it, then that's all we can do. Unfortunately, people are too busy and you can't force them to drink the water and all that. So, hey, Christine, Steffi, Joe, thanks for being here. All right. So, we talked about when and where to start. We didn't talk about where yet. Let's talk about where to host your meetup. <clears throat> a lot of people think, excuse me, I have a, um, a lot of people think they have to have it at a restaurant in a private room. Uh, I know people that have started at their home. Uh, now, I don't know that I would do it in my home because meetup people come from anywhere, but I know people that are doing it in their home right now today, um, and then they just don't advertise the address until they actually probably have a conversation or get somebody to RSVP and really get to know the person, I'm guessing. I don't think I would do that, but it's possible, and maybe 10 years ago it would have been totally fine. It's a little weird now. But that's your choice. Uh, one of the biggest things, though, I recommend is, okay, all of us know a CPA, a financial advisor, a mortgage consultant, or a real estate agent, or an insurance agent. I know you all know at least one or two or 20 million of those people, right? We love them. Now, most of them work out of a big office building, right? And all those office buildings have conference rooms. and. I will tell you that most of them probably have free access to those conference rooms anytime they want to use it. All they have to do is reserve it. Now, if you chum up with them and say, hey, 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 I'll give you some extra exposure in my meetup if you come and you allow us to do it in your conference room. Why not start there? You can start there and then they've got restrooms right there. You've got a kitchen if you want to bring snacks. They can bring their own. you got audio visual usually and plugs and everything. I mean, it's one of the easiest places to start uh, and find a place, and then it's free, okay? So just ask people. You've got to ask for things that you want, and give them, uh, make it a win-win, right? Give them some exposure. Hey, Leslie. We've got Leslie and Megan. Thank y'all. Awesome. So everybody wants to know about meetups, apparently, and some of you are already doing them, I think. <coughs> okay. So we talked about where. That's one good place. Now, I host mine in, at first I started it in a hotel. I moved it from the hotel that it was at when I took it over because they wanted $400 for like a two-hour event. I'm like, I'm not paying $400. So that was ridiculous. 
Um, but then I moved it to one that was charging me about $236, $236. And I was getting about 30 to 40 people at, um, was it 15? I think it was $15 a head. And I was just barely covering my expenses, right? And again, you're not in it for the expenses. Remember, it's what you can get out of it. So you never, well, not never, but you don't go into it going, oh, I have to cover my expenses. Well, maybe, yes, it's always a good goal, and that's why we have a fee to get in. But the goal is to get them to want to work with you or sign up with you or come to your event or hire you for coaching or what buy your books or whatever you can do. And the back end is where you make the money. And the back end is where you make the money in most situations. So make sure you have a plan for monetizing that back end. Okay. Hey, Heather. Um, make sure if you guys have questions, nobody's typing any questions yet, just saying hi. Thank you. <laughs> but if you have questions about it, I'm happy to share. All right, so then, uh, so those are some ideas on where. Now I hold it in a restaurant uh, during lunch because uh, basically I was in an evening slot and that's when it was a bigger event. But the evening started not to work for me and I started like dreading going to my own meetup because it was like, oh my God, it's at six o'clock. I want to be at home drinking wine and eating dinner with my family at six o'clock. I don't want to be schleffing off to a hotel room to do a meetup, right? No offense, but my lifestyle changed. And so I changed my meetup from an evening at a hotel with no food, frankly, uh, to a luncheon because I wanted to go to lunch. <laughs> I'm at home all day, usually doing videos and calls and client things and interviews. And I like to get out every once and go to lunch. So I planned it around lunch. I planned it around my schedule. I planned it 10 minutes from my house, and that's where it is. And you should. You should plan your meetup around your life, not everybody else's, okay? The right people will still come. Just know 100% of the right people will still come, okay? Now, if it's a less, uh, smaller group, that's fine. If it's a bigger group, that's fine too. I've had an event where <clears throat> I had four people at this event. One was already a client. One had invited me there. A uh, third person didn't know me at all, and the fourth person was actually the boss of the person who invited me. And guess how much? I mean, all three of those people actually bought something from me at this event. I sold $7,500 to three people at a four-person event. So don't underestimate the power of a small event, and don't be discouraged. Just be on. Just be always on and show up and do your best, and people, people will be watching if you do your best. So... That's the best thing I can say with that. Um, we want to talk about filling seats next and some offers and how to monetize that. Pam, did you have a question? She says, after Rita, let's see. Let's see, she says, any suggestions on how to get people you don't know to the event? Do you purchase ads? Okay. Well, I never purchase ads. I am not a fan of Facebook ads, number one, at all. I think it's a racket. I think lots of people do spend a lot of money and they make a lot of money. But in order to play that game, you got to invest a lot of money. And I've done it. Okay, I've spent a couple thousand dollars in advertising on Facebook especially. And, um, and probably over the long term, it would work. I just, I don't want to spend three thousand dollars a month or even a thousand dollars or even fifty dollars for an ad and I know some of you are probably thinking oh I spend fifty dollars and I make hundreds of dollars from advertising great for you but it's not the norm okay great for you but it's not the norm so I don't recommend I'm all about free first then pay where can we go for free first to get what we want or to get people in the seats and then where do we need to pay and invest I do invest I am I'm investing in a sponsorship um, right now to speak in Orlando and have a table display and be one of the sponsors of this event where there's gonna be 300 of my ideal prospects, okay? I do that. I invest in those types of opportunities. I'm not necessarily gonna invest in local advertising because I think people need to meet you and trust you and connect with you in order to buy from you. So with Meetup, the thing about Meetup is it goes viral anyways. I mean, people will find your Meetup. Your numbers will climb without you doing anything. Now, I don't recommend you don't do anything, but they will climb. Now, you can also put your Meetup over on Eventbrite. You can put it on a Facebook event, okay? So all these places are free. These places are free. You don't have to buy ads. 
And then you obviously put it on your website. You have an event page on your website. You put it in your email newsletter. You put a blog post out. You put it on your event page. You put posts out that are in, um, you know, image posts as well as these kinds of uh, invitation. You might do a Facebook Live inviting people to the to the meetups. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can do for free first without having to pay. It's just most people are not willing to do all those things, or they aren't willing to take the time to do them. Now, you can delegate a lot of it. I'm a huge proponent of delegating and automating a lot of the marketing that you're doing in the follow-up, but a lot of people say, okay, well, woe is me. I don't have enough money in my checkbook to uh, go hire an assistant to do some of this. Well. You know, you either got to do it yourself or you got to pay someone to do it because most of it needs to get done if you want to fill your seats. So there's, it's, it's a cash 22, but you know, I found that hiring a team, I have the most amazing team now and that most of them are actually on the East coast. Uh, but they, they get so much done for me. I mean, and anything I can think of, the majority of them could, could handle and they do it really quickly for me. So you have to find the right team that works for you. And I'm happy to share um, about who to hire and all that. I actually have a great freebie on who to hire. <clears throat> and uh, the, well, you can go find the, it's an ebook. It's an ebook and a checklist of all the things you could potentially delegate and how to find those people. And it's at jumpstartyourteam.com. So go check it out. It's jumpstartyourteam.com. And that was just a random thought I had, but it's there if you want it and you want to know how to do that. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Kim. Um, hopefully that answered your question, Pam, on um, do we purchase ads. So I don't for Meetup. It depends, though. So if this is your primary and only like marketing lead generation thing, then there might be some advertising, but I'd want to talk to you specifically in order to um, suggest the right thing for you. I wouldn't necessarily like take out an ad in a paper or a magazine or anything like that. I don't think you need to do that, but there are ways to get free publicity. So I come from the offline world, remember? So I come from the advertising, publicity, direct mail world. I had to learn all this online stuff myself, and now I know both. So the beauty of working with me is that I know both. I know how to do all of those things so that we can maximize all the free stuff that you can do without having to invest a lot in advertising and other things. So, all right. So other ways to fill seats, well, I just mentioned a whole bunch of ways, but you've got to recruit people, of course. Then once they've RSV, this is a key. This is something, this is a writer downer. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Pam. This is a writer downer. When you have a meetup and it, and literally there's 18 people say that are RSVP that are they're gonna come on Monday okay your meetings on Monday it's Friday and you're like yay there's 18 people coming well Monday's gonna roll around and you might be lucky to get five of those people who actually show up that's what happens right so unless it's a paid thing now I've been getting better about getting people to prepay for their luncheon um, but people are lazy so that's why I make a ten dollar charge if you wait and come at the door it's ten dollars more right I want to I want to make it as painful I should make it more because it'd be really painful then right um, but you got to make it painful enough so that they do what you want them to do when you want them to do it so I tell people to prepay the Monday before the Wednesday lunch and this last one they got I mean this last week this last Wednesday Almost every single person paid within that Monday. I was so thankful because it was very helpful for me and my system. <laughs> and I have, I take payments through my shopping cart on my website for my, this is where the systems come in. If you think you're going to wait and get cash or check at the door, oh my God, it's going to be a nightmare for you. It's going to be a nightmare and you're going to have to make change and oh my gosh, you want to prepay. You want to have people pay on your website through a shopping cart. I can help you figure that technology out. It's super simple. Or use PayPal or whatever, but have a link to buy. You know, you need to have that stuff set up. So if you go to my um, my SAC Speaker Meetup page, which is linked in the post again, um, you'll see in all the descriptions it gives you the link to go pay. And so, but a lot of people don't. They, they ignore it or don't see it. And so I'm constantly sending emails to say, don't forget to prepay, you're gonna pay more at the door, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, so 
you want to make it easier on yourself with that. All right, and I forget, I went a squirrel. I went on a squirrel and I forgot what I was saying. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's talk about monetizing though. What are you, how are you gonna, sometimes people get uncomfortable making offers at these types of things. And they think, well, it's a meetup and everybody's coming um, to network with each other. I feel uncomfortable being, you know, taking the stage and talking about myself and making an offer. Well, stop it. Why would you even have a meeting without being able to do that? That's just silly. That's crazy. You might as well just go and attend other events then and work the room instead of hosting one. If you're going to host one, you need to be the leader. You need to be the expert. You need to be the one in the spotlight at least part of the time. Okay? So you deserve to share some content, give some value, and make an offer. Now, your offer can just be to come and talk with you in a free call. It can be to get on your email list, be on the meetup, give me your card, and I'll add you and send you my free ebook or, or whatever. It can be to um, find out more or get my checklist. It can be free stuff that you're offering, frankly, but why not make an offer? I mean, I've been selling my uh, Jumpstart Your Book, my Jumpstart Your Blank compilation book opportunity, and my group is, is a great place for that because they're all speakers and entrepreneurs, and if they don't already have a book, they want to be an author, and so selling a, a $1,000 um, opportunity to be an author in my compilation book was brilliant, and I got, I don't know, like six or eight people signed up from the group um, into the book compilation, so it was a no-brainer. Right, most of the time I'm not selling something that expensive at all. I'm selling like a a hundred or two hundred dollar ticket to one of my events, okay? Or I'm selling books. I have my two books there, right? My Jumpstart Your Business Now and my Love Yourself Successful. I always bring books. If you're an author, you've got to bring books everywhere you go. So you can sell your books. I might sell my Jumpstart Your Marketing System. It depends on the topic too that I'm training on or whatever. If I'm training on Marketing, I might sell my marketing system. If I'm training on something around speaking and getting started speaking, I might sell my speaker training program. So it just depends. And I'll give a deep discount if you sign up today, that kind of thing. And people do. They do, I'm telling you. So always have a plan for monetizing and making offers at the end of your meetup. Uh, you know, don't be shy. If they don't like it, I'm sorry, but they can go away and not come back. I mean, the right people will come. The right people will love your content. The right people will love the value that you're giving. The right people will love the networking and the masterminding and whatever you choose to do. The wrong people can go away, and it's okay. All right? So that's kind of what I wanted to share with you today about meetups. And that was pretty, like, thorough, I think. So uh, I should get paid a commission from meetup.com, frankly. But um, now you can do it without meetup.com, but you won't have that viral spread of attendees and people. And it's just a great online tool to manage people, frankly. So, you know, for 90 bucks every twice a year, it's not that expensive of a place to house your group, so to speak. That doesn't mean I also have a Facebook group for my meetup group. I also have um, a place on my website where they can go and sign up to be a speaker. So I have a couple pages on my website that are devoted to my speaker group. And if you want to go look at those, it's sacspeaker.com. So sacspeaker, S-A-C, speaker.com is a place you can look to see how I set up taking guests or um, guest speakers, okay? Now, whether you take a guest speaker or not, you better put it through an online form because you're going to be in chaos if you're just taking email information from people. It's a nightmare because as soon as I get that information, it's a whole system I have set up. Everything just goes straight to my assistant. I don't have to do anything. She markets it all, and I just show up. Seriously, people, that's what happens. So, But you've got to get these systems in place or you're going to be – you're going to be in chaos. You're going to be managing too much of this small stuff in your business and not making the big money. So we don't want to spend too much time on the $25 thing. We want to spend time on the $2,500 or $25,000 thing. All right? So that's what I recommend. And um, <clears throat> hey, Gail, nice to see you. I can't see anymore. All right, let's see. Who else said Ellie? Or L, Cindy Sharp, thanks. First time seeing you live. Great info. Thanks, Cindy. Leslie Law has great stuff. Thanks, Katrina. 
Pam says, thank you for sharing. Great. Well, hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you guys want to come out to my meetup, um, we just had the luncheon. The next one, it's the first Wednesday of the month, and it's in Roseville at the Old Spaghetti Factory. If you're not local to the Sacramento area, then you can come to the webinar, which is this coming Tuesday, August 7th. And I honestly, I didn't pick this topic just to have you come to the webinar, but it's convenient because it is Tuesday at five o'clock Pacific and anybody anywhere can join us. I've had people from the UK, from Australia, um, all over the place come to this webinar. So if you are an entrepreneur or a speaker or want to be either come to that. And again, the link is in the post and, uh, I wish you have a, I hope you have a good Rest your, or good start of your weekend. Is it already the weekend? I don't know. It's Friday somewhere. It's five o'clock somewhere. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for being here. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.